Good evening, Titans, and this is Mr. Simpson again, and tonight we'll be discussing Lesson 1.3, Solving Equations with Variables on Both Sides of the Equal Sign. So again, if you look at the objectives, we're going to solve linear equations that have variables on both sides, identify special solutions of linear equations, and also use linear equations to solve real-life problems. So the core concept is solving equations with variables on both sides. And it states, to solve an equation with variables on both sides, simplify one or both sides of the equation if necessary, then use inverse operations to collect the variable terms on one side, collect the constant terms on the other side, and isolate the variable. So we're going to do an example here on the next slide that will cover this core concept. So if you notice, the difference between this problem and the problems we were doing is that we have a variable term on the left side and a variable term on the right side. And to solve an equation, we have to have the variable terms to one side of the equal sign and the constant terms, or the terms with no variables, on the other side. Since we already have a negative 9x on the right side, we're going to move the negative 4x to that other side. So we're going to do that by adding 4x to each side. And again, we're using inverse operations to do this. So now, on the left side, we have just 10. And on the right side, we have negative 9x plus 4x would be a negative 5x. Now we have the variable on one side, the constant on the other, and we're ready to solve by dividing. So in this case, we divide both sides by a negative 5, and we get x is equal to a negative 2. So if you want to rewrite it as x equals a negative 2, that'd be great. Here is another one, and again, the main thing is that we have variables on both sides. Now, you see that there are parentheses, so we learned the last couple of days, if we have parentheses, we have to eliminate them by using the distributive property. So we'll go ahead, on the left side, distribute the 3 to both those terms. So 3 times 3x would be 9x, and 3 times minus 4 would be minus 12. Now I have to take 1 fourth times 32x, so 1 fourth times 32 over 1, and if we cross cancel, we get 8, so that becomes 8x plus. Now I have 1 fourth times 56 over 1. And again, 4 goes into 56 14 times. So then I have plus 14. Now again, we have variables on both sides. So next, I want to move the variable terms to one side. So I'm going to move the variables to the left. So I'm going to subtract 8x from each side. And then at this point, I could also then add 12 to each side. Now, sometimes we'll do this in one step. Sometimes we do this in two steps. So in this case, if I do it this way, I get x. The constant goes away. Here, the variable term goes away, and I get 26. So my final answer is x equals 26. So now I'd like you to try, and again, you don't have to do all three of these, but I'd like you to try maybe a couple of them. And so pause the video, try a couple of these equations, and when you restart it, I'll reveal the answers. All right, for number one, the answer you should have gotten is x equals a negative 2. For number 2, the answer you should have gotten is h is equal to 3 eighths, which you can leave as a fraction, or you could write it as 0 0.375. And number 3, the answer would be n equals a negative 6. Oh, that's right. I forgot there should have been an 
equal sign right there. Forgot to tell you that, so obviously you maybe skipped number three anyway because it didn't look like it was correct. But anyway, number three, if there's an equal sign between the parenthesis and the minus sign, you get n equals a negative six. All right, when we have variables on both sides of the equal sign, there's a special case that can happen. Actually, there's two special cases that can occur. So equations do not always have one solution. An equation that is true for all values of the variable is called an identity and has infinitely many solutions. An equation that is not true for any value of the variable has no solution. So we take a look at these two examples. The first one I'm going to distribute through to get rid of the parentheses and I get 15x plus 6 equals 15x. Now, if I go to solve this, I need to get the variable terms on one side, and since I only have one constant term, I'm going to move this variable term to the right side. So I'm going to subtract 15x from each side. And when I do that, I'm left with 6 on the left side, but 15x minus 15x is 0. So my variable terms went away, and this is one of those special cases. And so when you're solving an equation and the variable terms eliminate on both sides, and all you have is a number equal to a number, if that statement is false, then there's no solution. And since 6 does not equal 0, this would be no solution. Now, if we look at example B, again, we have to use the distributive property, so I'm going to distribute through the negative 2. So negative 2 times 4y is a negative 8y, plus negative 2 times 1 is a negative 2, equals a negative 8y minus 2. So again, I have variables on both sides, so I'm going to move the variables to the left, so I'm going to add 8y to each side. And if I do this just this step first, those eliminate, leaves me a negative 2 on the left side. These eliminate and leaves me just a negative 2 on the right side. So again, we have no variable terms. So the variable terms eliminated, but this time I'm left with a true statement. Negative 2 does equal a negative 2, and this represents an identity. And this answer, this equation has what we call infinitely many solutions. All right. So those are the two types of special cases. So again, I'd like you to pause the video at this time and attempt problems, you know, four, five, six, and seven. You don't have to do all four again, but just uh, if you would do at least 4 and 5, you would see both cases. All right, welcome back. So if you did number 4, you should have had infinitely many solutions. If you do number 5, you get no solution. If you do number 6, you get one solution, so k is a negative one-half. You can solve that. The variables didn't eliminate, so there's only one solution, and that's typical. And then number 7, if we solve this, would be another infinitely many solutions. All right? Now, here is the core concept, just the summary of it. And we like to say there are five steps. Sometimes we might um, combine two of the steps into one, but typically there's five steps. So step one is use the distributive property to remove any grouping symbols. Once we've done that, then we want to simplify the expression on each side of the equation. So we're just simplifying like we've been doing the last couple days. 
Then step three, we're going to get the variable terms to one side of the equation and the constant terms to the other side. And so that's where we're combining the two steps. Sometimes they may even do that in two steps um, where we would move the variable terms first and then we would move the constant terms. And then step four is to solve by isolating the variable. And then step five in this case is check your solution. So again, these are the steps that we would use to solve these types of equations. And uh, we're going to go ahead and skip the word problems for tonight uh, since the video has already been 11 minutes long. So uh, just come ready tomorrow to practice solving equations with variables on both sides.